When Game 7 of the 2010 NBA Finals comes to mind, most people think of Ron Artest's heroic 3 that put the Lakers up by 6 with a minute to go. Kobe begs him not to shoot it, he does it anyways and swishes it. Next thing you know, Brian celebrates his 5th ring in LA. But what happened in that 1 minute span is rarely spoken and the unsung hero is often forgotten. So much so that if it wasn't for Sasha Vujicic, there may have never been a Lakers celebration and the confetti might have been green that night. Vujicic was one of the most recognizable faces from that 3 year run to the finals. He got the nickname The Machine, was pretty famous for dating Maria Sharapova and was one of the rare guys who could get under Kobe's skin. And Lakers fans loved him, but in reality he didn't really play nor score a lot for this team. This was especially the case in that 2010 season, a measly 8.5 minutes per game and under 3 points. So how in the world did he end up being involved at the end of the most important game for the Lakers season and probably for Kobe's legacy? Stay with me, here's what happened in the playoffs. The 25 year old Slovenian at the time completely missed the first two rounds of the 2010 playoffs against OKC and Utah due to a sprained ankle that he suffered in the final game of the regular season. He returned to action in the Western Conference Finals against the Suns but played only 23 minutes total in that 6 game series. And understandably it was questionable if he would earn any minutes going into the finals. In Game 1 at Staples, Vujicic got just 8 minutes of action all in the first half. He watched the second half from the bench as the Lakers took a 1-0 lead. The Celtics evened things up in Game 2 on the wings of Ray Allen's 8 threes. Allen being a hero in a finals game in Staples was a painful deja vu for the Lakers but especially for Sasha. And for that, we need to go back to 2008. In their first final showdown, the Lakers were down 2-1 and Game 4 at home was a must win for them. And it came down to the wire, Ray Allen has the ball against Vujacic with a chance to clinch the game. In probably the worst defensive sequence of Sasha's entire career, it's almost as if he allows and opens up the driving lane for Allen who just blew by him. This is how easily Boston got a commanding 3-1 lead that would ultimately lead them to the championship. It was a miscommunication and he expected the help to be there but that's not an excuse that would heal the heartbreak of the Lakers fans. A revenge against the Celtics would however. And that brings us to 2010 again. In game 3, Vujacic plays a crucial role at the end. Up by 5 with 32 seconds to go, Phil Jackson puts Sasha in, an 88% free throw shooter till that point of his career, knowing that the Celtics will foul. The ball finds him and he calmly knocks down both of his free throws icing the game with 23 seconds left. Nobody knew it at the time but this was a foreshadowing of how this series would end. Moving on, Boston won the next two games at home due to the old finals format 2-3-2 and had a chance to win it all in LA. But with their backs against the wall, the Lakers blew them out by 22 points and secured a deciding 7th game. In this 3 game span, Vujacic had about 10 minutes of playing time with 4.5 points per game. All of this brings us to the final showdown, a tough, physical and honestly an ugly game. Kobe had a hard shooting night to say the least as he went 6 for 24 from the field but redeemed himself by grabbing 15 rebounds. Brian's will to win and ability to contribute despite an off shooting night was undeniable. Actually, he was the one that dished out the crucial assist to Ron Artest that put LA up 79-73 with just over a minute left in the fourth quarter. Lakers fans could feel the victory, but Boston would not surrender. They ran a play for their deadly shooter Ray Allen who got the ball in the left corner and almost immediately answered the one from Artest. Boom! And just like that, we're back at a 3 point game with 51 seconds to go. On the next possession, wanting to put the nail in the coffin, Kobe settles for a long contested 3 and misses but Pau Gasol comes up with the monster offensive rebound before passing it back to Bryant who gets fouled in the paint. Two free throws and Kobe makes them perfectly to put LA up by 5 points with 25 seconds to go. Still a lot of time on the clock. And remember, our hero is not even on the floor yet. Doc calls a timeout and draws up another play for Allen who's short on the 3 but this game is so crazy that Rajan Rondo, a 24% 3 point shooter, fires it up and buries it. 
All of a sudden, we have a two-point game with 16 seconds to go. Unbelievable! Despite having a full timeout, Phil Jackson decides not to use it and lets them play. This almost cost them a lot as Rondo pressures Kobe in the backcourt and actually pokes the ball out of his hand. There's a video review to determine possession and Lakers fans hold their breath. But during all that drama, a crucial moment takes place. After ruling it a Lakers ball, Phil inserts Vujicic in the game, the free throw specialist as Boston would look to foul. Now, Sasha was great at shooting free throws, but he had only played 4 minutes in this entire game. The machine had been ice cold sitting on the bench for almost the entire second half. This was a risky move. Still, he goes to get the ball confidently and gets fouled with 11 seconds to go. This is it. The game ultimately came down to Sasha Vujacic. If he misses both free throws, the Celtics could tie or potentially even win the game. Even if he makes one of two, another three for Boston would send the game into overtime. The pressure of the entire basketball world was on his shoulders. In an incredible display of composure, however, Vujacic did not let the magnitude of this moment rattle him, so he calmly knocked down both free throws to give the Lakers a two-possession lead. Two of the most important free throws in NBA Finals history, and that's definitely the case when talking about the Lakers as a team. And you know what happens, the rest is history, as the Celtics miss and we got this lasting image of Kobe chasing the ball with joy, knowing that it's all over. Brian himself actually admitted in the post-game interview that with the game on the line, he's looking for Sasha Vujacic. That's how clutch he was. Sasha steps to the line. He goes bang, bang. Two critical free throws. Well, I'm very proud of him. Um, he's like a little brother to me. I, you know, I tease him quite a bit. But one thing about Sasha is that he doesn't lack confidence. I mean, I mean, he really, he's not afraid of pressure situations at all. I mean, if there's a guy on the floor that I'm going to pass the ball to to hit a game-winning shot after Derek, it's Sasha. Hmm. Um, because he just has absolutely no fear whatsoever. The Machine spent seven seasons with the Los Angeles Lakers winning two championships, and by solely looking at the numbers, you can say that he was a below-average player, with five points, one and a half rebounds, and one assist per game, and his time wearing the purple and gold uniform. But Sasha will forever be in the hearts of Lakers fans, as he proved that he was a big-time player who had no fear when it mattered the most. This is why I wanted to shed some light on an often forgotten but very important moment in the Lakers history book. Hey guys, this channel is officially back and rebranded as NBA Nostalgia. For all of us real NBA fans of the good old days, I'll be posting some interesting stories from the past. So be sure to subscribe and let me know who would you like to see a video about. Talk to you in the next one. Peace out.